and my name is Michael Smith, the National Consumer Education Manager of Genome Canada, and thank you all so much for joining me today on another Genome's Magical Machine Mystery Tour. So again, what will we be talking about today? Hmm, it's a mystery, but soon to be revealed, so I won't keep you in suspense. Thank you all for joining uh, so promptly, too. It's wonderful. Now, for those, though, that do happen to join late, again, never fear, uh, all of these presentations are stored on the IGTV icon on the Genome HQ uh, Instagram page, so you can always go back to a review whenever. And then uh, usually it takes me a couple of days to put these on the Genome HQ YouTube channel, so then you can also go there to view them. And then usually I, I cut out the beginning of me, you know, saying hi and all of that kind of stuff to try to condense the video a little bit too, because oh, time just gets away <laughs> from me easily as I could talk all day about uh, the fabulous Genomi machines and accessories and everything. So yes, what machine will we be talking about today? Well, we will soon see. Ooh, here we go. So here I need to move over a little bit all under, you know, wraps, uh, kind of cloak and dagger-ish, uh, for our Genomi's Magical Machine Mystery Tour. And ooh, look, this machine comes with a cover. And that's something I often neglect to mention. You know, a lot of Genomi machines do come with some kind of dust cover of one form or another. Now you can see this one is uh, just plastic, but it's got the Genomi logo on it. But fabulous to, again, keep the dust off your machine. If you're transporting this machine, then again, there's a slot up here uh, for the handle so you can carry your machine with the dust cover on. So that's cool. And even, oh, if you didn't want this plastic cover, well, you could always even cut this plastic cover up add some seam allowances, and then you can make a fabric cover, and you could use this one as your pattern. So how easy is that? But you know, also you can go to our friends at Sew for Home, uh, that's Sew, S-E-W, for, the number four, uh, so for home.com and they have a ton of free patterns for sewing machine covers so you could also get a great pattern a free pattern uh, that way too for your machine but yes a number of our machines already come with a cover of one form or another so you know that's great although ultimately you know I've never covered my sewing machines because in there I'm always using them <laughs> So, yes, what is our fabulous machine today? Ooh, if I can take this dust cover off. <gasps> the reveal. I feel like I should have some dramatic music again. <laughs> so, our fabulous magical machine mystery tour machine today is the Genomi C30. So, just as you can imagine, the C30 stands for there's 30 stitches to this machine. So how cool is that? Now, I love this machine because it is very compact. Uh, oh, it's only about 15 inches long here, uh, maybe about just under 11 inches tall. And uh, oh, I measured it earlier. It's just under seven inches uh, wide. So that again, nice, small, compact, very lightweight machine. So great if you're gonna be traveling, great if you want a second machine for you know your cottage, your motor home, you know, anything like that. Uh, great if once we get the COVID restrictions lifted and we can do in-person classes at the Genome Sewing and Learning Center, uh, then this could be a classroom machine. So how great is that? And the C30 is one of our machines that you may find at your a uh, local uh, big box store. You know, Genomi does uh, make some machines for the, again, big box stores because we know not everybody has a Genomi dealer in their town. You know, you may be several hours away from a Genomi dealer. So to make it a little more convenient for you, uh, again, Genomi has made some specific machines for that uh, mass market. So this is one of them, this C30. Now, this is a great machine if you are, again, a beginner sewer and you want a very user-friendly machine. Now, I find all Genomi machines are very uh, easy to use right out of the box, but this machine in particular, like super simple to uh, use. Don't be intimidated. The fact that it is an electronic machine uh, is very user-friendly. Not only does it come with a great instruction book, of course, but it even has this ready-to-sew quick start guide. So I thought that was great 
great. So they give you tips right out of the box. If you don't want to read your instruction manual, but they give you this little quick start guide. So here is about threading the machine and they go through, you know, winding the bobbin and how to adjust your tensions, you know, to get uh, your perfect stitch again, right out of the box. So this is fabulous to have. So that is great. And then you'll see that, oh, it does come with quite a bit, but again, nothing too fancy, nothing too overwhelming. You can always start and add to it. So here we do have our, you know, usual tools like our um, seam ripper, which every beginner sewer and every sewer, you know, I've been sewing for 30 years and I can't live without my seam ripper. So, you know, if you sew, you must rip at some time or another. So seam rippers included, which is great. And again, our little brush to keep uh, everything neat and clean. Oh, things like extra bobbins, of course. We always need the fabulous Janome J bobbins. And there's a little J. It's often hard to see because it's clear <laughs> but there's a little J right in the middle here on that stub and why the Janome J bobbin is important there is a rubberized compound in these bobbins so that helps uh, prevent any sort of backlashing and and spinning uh, in the bobbin case especially if we're sewing at high speeds and all of a sudden we stop we want that bobbin to stop exactly where we want it to so by having that rubberized compound in it that helps it also keeps it a little bit quieter uh, as well so you want to make sure that you use Janome J bobbins or at least size uh, class 15 that refers to the the depth of the bobbin here the size of the bobbin you want to make sure it's a class 15 a bobbin to fit in your bobbin holder but I always recommend the authentic Janome J bobbins now even if you may buy your machine at a big box store you know, you can always go to our fabulous Janome dealers, and many of them are offering a curbside pickup and online shopping. So you can order through the dealer online. Again, check with the, the dealer who may be nearest with you. But, you know, I also have heard people say, oh, I, I you know, the dealer closest to me isn't, uh, you know, operating online and stuff. So they, they just keep checking for a dealer who is. And, you know, with shipping, they'll, they'll ship you anything. <laughs> so a great resource uh, for some extra bobbins, for example, are these Janome pre-wound bobbins. So how great is that? They come in white and black. And then after you finish using these, you've got your reusable uh, Janome J bobbin. So that's great. Or, you know, you can also get, ooh, some fabulous like red bobbins, for example, a whole box of those. Or we've got, you know, pink bobbins and blue bobbins. So you can get everything, all the accessories for your Janome machine from a Janome dealer. And again, check with them about uh, ordering online or again, picking up curbside or that again, they, they could ship these to you. Uh, things like all the extra needles you will need. And oh yes, all the beautiful thread like the Madeira polyneon thread or Madeira katana thread you can order all of that through Janome dealers uh, even if you don't purchase your machine through a dealer such like the C30 and then you know you can always check on our uh, Janome.ca site for our bilingual Janome accessories guide. Or again, if you're in America, go check uh, Janome.com and check the accessories tab. And this will list all the extra feet and accessories that are, are available for your machine, whatever machine it is. But in this case, yes, you can get a lot of extra accessories for your C30. So that's fabulous, uh, you know, including, I've shown this before, that cute little picture cushion that you can sit right up top here of your machine. So again, there's lots of available that you can always add to it, but already you get so much with your C30. Uh, for example, there is this little extra spool pin, vertical spool pin that you can add up here to that little slot. So this is great whenever I use my fabulous Madeira metallic threads, for example, I always like using the vertical spool pin uh, to feed the thread a little bit more uh, evenly. So there's less thread breakage. Uh, but specifically thread I wanted to talk about right at the get-go 
included with your C30R two spool caps. There is the small one, and here already I have the big one on, and these spool caps come with virtually all Janome machines. And it's very important to use the correct spool cap for whatever uh, size uh, spool of thread you're going to use. So here I have some of our fabulous Madeira uh, polyneon thread, and you can see as the thread is going around that spool pin. Can you see how it could easily happen as you're stitching around and stopping and starting and stopping and sewing fast, uh, how that thread could wrap around that spool pin right around here. It could easily wrap around that. Believe me, ask me how I know. <laughs> so that's why to avoid this happening, then that's why we want to use the correct spool cap. So I don't want to use this little small one with this spool of thread, even though it is a smaller spool, but I don't want to use that small spool because, or that small spool cap, because then you see as the thread twists around, it could still wrap around the edge of that spool pin because of the, the twist of the thread. So instead, we want to use the big spool cap. And by doing so, then we have, uh, again, it's, it's bigger, it's going over that spool pin so that way we don't have to worry as the thread is wrapping around it's not going to wrap around that spool pin so it's important to use the correct size spool cap and again the manuals go through all of this too but it's nice to get a little reminder now you can also see oh i do have a little wiggle room with my spool uh, as well i i find a, a mistake people often make again especially beginners they push the spool cap on so tight that the spool can't even move now the spool does need to move a little bit as well to avoid the thread you know pulling potentially it should feed off evenly but again depending on how uh, tightly wound that thread is uh, it's nice to have a little wiggle room for your spool you know you don't need a ton but just enough to let that spool spin uh, if it needs to, to have that thread come off evenly. So again, that's great. Now you use these little smaller spool caps for, oh yes, again, back to our thread. Uh, uh, there are threads that you can get from your Janome dealer. Oh, like this Iris uh, cotton quilting thread. I use this a lot. So spools like that, again, that's when I would use that smaller spool cap. Or again, if the spool looks like that, that's when I would use the smaller spool cap. Now, we also, uh, from your Janome dealer, you can get in a blister pack these. This is called the Special Spool Cap. So this uh, comes with some machines, but again, it's in a separate blister pack. And these are good. You can use them either like that, or they're really good if the diameter of the edge of the um, the cone uh, can accommodate, you can use them like that. So then this uh, tapered end goes in the hole of the, this is one of the mini king spools. So that's how it goes there. So you can use this special spool cap, again, depending on what your uh, spool or your cone of thread looks like. And these again are available from Janome dealers. And again, check with them uh, about shipping online. So those are very handy. So yes, back to our fabulous uh, C30. Again, yes, it comes with a little pack of needles, but again, from your Janome dealer, you can get a lot of, Janome has needles of every type, like leather needles and ballpoint needles for knit fabrics, uh, as well as our, you know, regular size 14 and size 11 uh, needles that we use the most. So check with the dealer uh, with that. Now we've got a couple of feet included. This is our uh, sliding buttonhole foot. Now we, there's a sliding buttonhole foot on the Sewist uh, 721 that I demonstrated a couple of weeks ago on Janome HQ. So you can go back to, again, either the Janome HQ uh, Instagram page for the IGTV uh, to watch that Sewist 721 presentation. And I demoed the sliding buttonhole foot. 
But again, you can also go to Genome HQ YouTube to see that presentation. So that's included with the machine. The F foot, that is our uh, satin stitch foot, or the, the craft foot as some people call it. Uh, the F foot, again, I demoed on Genome HQ A to Z with Genome. So again, go back to Genome HQ YouTube to review that presentation. And why this F foot is good is it's got this little channel at the bottom there. So for all these beautiful decorative stitches, that you have at your C30, you would use this F foot with those decorative stitches. So that little channel at the bottom will allow those decorative stitches to form. Uh, I would also use uh, this foot to sew on a button, for example. Uh, so very multi-purpose foot too. And okay, our ever important uh, E foot, the zipper foot. Now I demonstrated the zipper foot, the E foot on the A to Z with Genomi series, the E episode. And the uh, zipper foot is great. Again, maybe you're buying this machine. You don't really want to sew as a full-time hobby, but again, we all had that zipper that busts, uh, for example, and or that button that pops off. So the C30 is a great machine if you only want to do, you know, just those those task sewing projects, like sewing on a button, or again, if your zipper busts and you need to replace the zipper, well, great, you've got a the E zipper foot that comes with your C30. So this would be a great machine for the, you know, occasional kind of task sewing as well. Again, it uh, doesn't take up a lot of room, uh, very lightweight. Uh, we've got about six and with six and a quarter from the needle uh, in the throat space. So still uh, quite big for a variety of projects. And then this is so cute, you know, the little screwdriver. Now, yes, from your Janome dealer, you can get the screwdriver, ooh, that looks like this, that comes with most machines. But for some others, then we have this little multi-purpose screwdriver. So it will loosen the screws of your needle plate here. And as well, it will loosen the screw of your uh, foot holder here. So that's good to have too. But uh, for me, you can never have too many screwdrivers. So this comes with the machine. You can also get those from the um, dealer. And again, you can never have too many, much like Zmerpers. I have so many of those too. So you can see here uh, the features of the machine. Oh yes, we've got the removable. Here's where all your little accessories come when you get the machine. They all come in this little accessory case, but you can remove this if you want free arm sewing. So that's great. We've got the little lever here. If you want to drop your feed dogs to do some free motion stitching, free, uh, free motion quilting, we can easily click that to drop the feed dogs. So that's great. And then the needle plate, it is not a metal needle plate, it's a resin, a very strong resin uh, material, so that again uh, keeps the machine lighter in weight, uh, but it still has, do you see all in there? It still has on our patented needle plates, you know, we have all these markings of uh, five-eighths of an inch, you know, for garment sewing patterns, or half of an inch, quarter of an inch, all the markings are still on the needle plate and the bobbin cover, so like how cool is that? Now, and, and two, don't be thinking of, oh, this machine is, you know, very compact and lightweight. Again, it's one of the kind of mass market machines, but doesn't mean that it's sacrificing in quality by any means. As always, for all Janome machines, they start with this cast aluminum skeleton, and then again, all the pretty pieces are built on top of it. So the machine is still, it may be small in size, but it's still small in stature, but it's still uh, hefty enough to do whatever kind of sewing you want to do and sturdy enough that it's going to stay in place and not, you know, jump all over the table. Uh, some great features that it has. Oh yes, it does have a uh, uh, needle threader, so that's wonderful. Uh, this is how you adjust your needle tension. But uh, here are some features. Oh yes, we've got the reverse button, and we've got the lock stitch button, and we've got the needle up and down button. So so even though this would make a great uh, entry level machine, these are, you know, some great, very user friendly features uh, that every sewer wants. So if you are a beginner, don't think, oh no, this machine is too complicated for me. It, it's very, again, user friendly and these are great features to have. Uh, now again, we've got 30 stitches from which to choose and very easy to go through. 
uh, with our mode button. So here it says, my little uh, dot there says, again, the number sign. So I can scroll through to be stitch number, you know, three, four, and so on. And as I'm selecting the stitches, you'll see then the needle is moving depending on what stitch I have selected. Now I can select with these arrows again going up all the way through 30, or if I get back down all the way to one, and let's say I wanted to select, oh, stitch number 27, for example, I can hit the down button and then I'll start at 30 and go down. So it makes it really quick to select stitches uh, that way. I don't have to go one all the way up to 30. I can start at, you know, 30 and then go backwards. <laughs> so that is good. Now let's look at these stitches. I can identify every single one of these stitches on my top of the line Memory Craft 15,000 quilt maker. Now that machine came out before this C30. So one thing I personally love about Janome, oh yes, they, you know, design from the uh, bottom up and they keep adding more features to the machines as they go up the, the line, uh, but they take a lot of those top end uh, features and put them into more, again, a uh, beginner, uh, lower on the end uh, line <laughs> um, uh, as far as all the features of the machine. So these stitches are all on the top of the line machine, but they're also on this C30 machine. So I think that is great. Now the C30 is a five millimeter machine, but oh look, when we do this comparison. So this uh, feather stitch, for example, is on a number of our Janome machines. So there's the feather stitch, our five millimeter feather stitch. And this was on the Continental M7. Uh, that's a nine millimeter machine, but hey, it's that same feather stitch. And then here's this like honeycomb uh, kind of heirloom sewing stitch. Well, there it is on my C30. And then here are some of those same honeycomb heirloom uh, stitches on the Continental M7. Seven. Again, that's a nine millimeter, millimeter machine. The C30 is five millimeter, but look, it's the same stitch. And then here's that scallop stitch is 29 on the C30. There's the scallop stitch of my M7. So again, uh, the uh, machines, just because they're like entry level or again, kind of lower on the, the production line, as far as like the number of features and stitches go, you still have a lot of variety of stitches, utility stitches, decorative stitches. And again, a lot of those uh, same stitches you find on uh, top of the line, higher end machines, but they're on a, a machine without that uh, same price point. So isn't that fabulous? Now here's a decorative stitch, it's 24. There it is on my uh, C30, so that's great. So I'm just going to quickly stitch this out. I'm not going to change to my, oh I should, I should change to my F2 or my F foot. Uh, here is our regular zigzag foot, it often comes on the machine. So yes, when I do decorative stitches, I am going to quickly change over to my F foot is that satin stitch foot and again the uh, feet just clip on and off very easily and then there I'm going to do that decorative stitch oh sorry I've got it on 27 the main thing is I wanted to switch it over to 24 I'm getting ahead of myself here so again easily done there it is to 24 now you can see as well I have I have some stabilizer. Anytime we do decorative stitches, we want to have a stabilizer of some kind under the machine or under the fabric. Now I'm going to do my lock stitch and that is going to complete the pattern and then lock off automatically. So how great is that? And as usual, I'm using these cute little mini duckling scissors to trim off my threads. I absolutely adore these. So there is, again, this was done on my Continental M7 9mm, really fancy machine. Well, this was done on my C30. And again, it's exactly the same stitch. It's a C30 is five millimeters as opposed to nine. So again, isn't that cool? So there's so many things that you can do. And again, this um, sort of feathery 
satin stitch, almost looks like a variable zigzag stitch. Again, we've got that number 21 there, so that's great. So one thing I wanted to do, oh, that I will show you before I get started on that, is this is the foot pedal that comes with the C30, which is all fine and good. But something I thought was very cool, you know, I always love to experiment and find out what works and then I can share it with all of you. This big, beautiful, extra large foot pedal that's also an optional accessory for a number of machines, it fits the C30 as well. Uh, the only thing you need to... Uh, you know, uh, pay attention to is, you know, here, this is the end of the foot pedal for the C30. And then I see, oh, is it? Ooh, it's exactly the same. So then, yes, it will fit. So that's a great optional accessory. Again, this uh, foot pedal that comes with the machine, nothing wrong, perfectly fine. But if you like a bigger foot pedal, then yes, one is available, so that is a great accessory. So that's cool. So yeah, something I wanted to quickly demo, although as usual, my time is going by so fast, is this memorized, ooh, there it is, number 17. And what M-E-M -E is, is memorized. So it is our buttonhole and the memorized buttonhole uh, feature is on again a lot of top of the line machines but we also have it on this c30 now if i want to ever for any of my stitches adjust the uh, width we can turn the mode there that's width our five millimeter maximum and then just go down there if we want the length then we hit that mode button and this is the length as well so oops we can uh, you know adjust this as well now if you make some adjustments and then you forget oh no i forget what i what the default was uh don't worry just select another stitch and then go back to your original stitch in this case it was 17 and then when i go back to my uh, default uh, here of my stitch length it's it's gone back to that default so you don't have to worry about uh, recording all those numbers remembering all those numbers if you're going to make some adjustments uh, just select a different stitch and then go back to the original one and you'll see what it was so number 17 this memorized buttonhole now this uh, again all the information is in your manual as well but we're going to use our cool uh, sliding buttonhole foot and it's got all the uh, centimeter markings here so you can really help line up where you want your buttonhole but it's a very cool feature and then again if you're going to do a uh, button placket and you have you know six and seven and eight and you know however many button holes uh, you have then you, they can always be consistently the same size so I have very exaggerated markings so you could see exactly uh, what I am doing but it's a very cool feature to have this memorized button hole so what I'm doing basically I am lining up my needle right here of the intersection of my vertical line and there's my horizontal line this is the start of my buttonhole so i'm going to put my needle right there and away i go now as i go up so it's going to stitch one side of the buttonhole it's doing like the zigzag the satin stitch and as I go up, I'm going to stop right when the needle gets to that other horizontal line. So that's the length of my buttonhole. And when I get it, and again, I love having that needle up and down so I can always select that. Yes, boom, my needle is exactly where I want it to be. Then we're going to use our reverse button here, and that's going to set the uh, the width of the button, and it's going to now start sewing back towards us. And then once I get back to that line, that original line where I started, I'm going to again stop and then use the reverse button. So now that's going to do the satin stitch across to finish off the one edge of the buttonhole now it's going in reverse 
and then again we're going back up to that second line. And once we get there, boom, I hit that reverse button again. It's stitching across. You hear that little beep? It's done. I raise my foot. Again, I use my little, ooh, my little duckling scissors here to trim off my threads. And again, whenever I'm doing decorative stitches, whenever I'm doing buttonholes, you'll see there's my beautiful buttonhole. It's exactly the size I want. And now the main thing is I can go back and do exactly as I started, get my needle exactly at the beginning, and then this buttonhole is going to finish exactly the same size as the first one. So I don't have to keep hitting the reverse button or anything after I do that first one. It's, it's recording, uh, recorded those settings, and now it's going to do uh, the same sewing. So how cool is that? And then I wait for that beep and then boom, there. So again, this uh, memorize buttonhole uh, feature, again, is on a lot of our top of the line machines, more expensive machines, but boom, those are exactly the same size. So how perfect is that? There again, they're exactly the same size. Uh, to cut them open, I love using either these little uh, duckling scissors that you just make a little snip in them and then I can get my scissors in there. They're again very sharp, so they're very good that way. Ooh, if I can get through that little hole, I don't want to cut any of my stitches. <laughs> so yes, you must be careful that way. So I use them or I've got these cute little scissors. They come from the um, Janome scissor kit that those are little scissors like that that I use these for buttonholes. And again, they've got the uh, little rubbery uh, tip on the end because they are quite sharp. So these come in the, ooh, yes, the fabulous Janome scissor kit that again, you could order from Janome dealers. And yes, if you're a beginner sewer, oh, okay, this, this is definitely an investment. Maybe uh, you could put this on your wish list and a couple of people could, uh, you know, chip in uh, for you because this is great that you want good quality uh, tools that will last you a lifetime, regardless of what experience level you have. If you're a beginner sewer, so many people think, oh, I'll just buy the cheapest thing. No, you really want to do yourself a favor and invest in good quality materials. They will last you a lifetime and you will get the best result uh, possible. So we want your sewing experience uh, to be good in the beginning and not have so many troubles. Uh, so for things like, yes, when you're doing buttonholes and your decorative stitches, oh yes, you want that stabilizer. So again, do yourself a favor. Uh, don't cheap out and make sure you get, oh yes, like the Madeira stabilizer starter pack that I talk about all the time. There are so many great stabilizers in them. And there you can see, oh, I did a buttonhole with this little scrap of stabilizer. You use everything. So nothing goes to waste, but having the stabilizers on hand really helps when you do want to do those, again, buttonholes and decorative stitches. Uh, you know, don't try to skimp and don't use it. Uh, it'll really impact the quality of of your sewing and in the enjoyment of your sewing. Uh, so again, Madeira Stabilizer Starter Pack you could order from your dealer. Or some things too that I love to stiffen my fabric, this to real magic. Uh, I've demonstrated it before on other Janome HQs. Um, oh, it was the number one uh, of the Janome's awesome accessory countdown. It was the ribbon sewing guide that I demoed to Real Magic and look at that fabric that's treated with it. Uh, it really becomes like paper. And you can see I didn't use a stabilizer on the back of this fabric. I instead treated it with to Real Magic. So it stiffened the fabric enough so that I didn't need an extra layer of stabilizer. So this is great and then this is going to wash out uh, afterwards. So you know that's great to have too. So again those you can get from your uh, dealer. So that in a nutshell is your fabulous uh, C30. And again time goes by way too fast but I hope you found it all very useful and enjoyable. I always like to share little tips and tricks uh, along the way too.
So thank you everyone for joining me today. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your Wednesday afternoon and thank you so much for joining me and I look forward to seeing you all on another's uh, Janome's Magical Machine Mystery Tour next week. Again, what we're going to talk about, I don't know, it's a mystery. But thank you everyone for joining me. Take care and have a fabulous day. Bye. <laughs>